Good evening, this is Bruce and welcome to my shop. Um, we're on uh, section four of the um, uh, of the ring gear job. Now, um, I've done uh, quite a bit of work uh, today in setting things up and we'll swing around to the small mill and you'll see quite a, a different style of setup. Uh, I've nodded the head, but I've also got the angle uh, angle head on it uh, and um, uh, what's the name and the angle head and, and uh, an extended cutter uh, but as we get closer I'll set this on the uh, tripod and we'll just uh, we'll talk about this a little bit um, nothing nothing simple in this job okay so um, there's a lot to talk about I um, I spoke at, earlier today in regard or, or yesterday in regard to this um, uh, this table the the indexing table and and the problems we had with it so I've, I've completely cleaned it up I got some new bearings for the pinion here um, I don't know if you can see that see where my hand is yet so the pinion here I've got it all working I've got the uh, I've got it so it turns easily as well and I've set it all up now with the setup, um, as I said, I, I decided I want, what I want to do is to index it separately per tooth rather than make an indexing plate and um, uh, with 18, 18, holes, um, 18 holes in a 23 hole plate and so forth. So uh, what I've come up with, this is, we're not going to work on this at the moment. This is just a setup to show how it's going to, how it's going to be set up because it's got to go to the lathe for me to cut this land down to that point there and once I've done that I'm going to fix up those five uh, teeth that are damaged and then what I'll do is I'll set I'll set this up straight and with the involute cutter I'll be I'll be trimming those teeth up to the right profile so that'll be the first job I'll do um, when it comes back onto this table now to set it up uh, first of all I had to get proud of of the of the plate here so we can get a through cut on the uh, involute so what I've done I've, ta I've taken a an old eight hole um, pipe uh, pipe flange and it's worked out quite nice, neatly actually with the eight slots in here so I bolted it down with these hexagon bolt uh, hexagon washers and what I did the first thing I did was I dialed in the table and got that a hundred percent we zeroed it in I then started to dial in uh, the ring until I was very, very close and I, I, I just tightened up those bolts and then with a pin punch and a, hammer, and a hammer, I just tapped and tapped and kept going till I got it 100% uh, and I, 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 I tapped in all of these washers so that they were locking up against the side. So, um, and then locked them into place. So that means that I could, I've actually got a jig so when I take these two, two units off here, it's still quite tight in there. Um, so I could take this away to the lathe, do the work and bring it back again. And I'm very sure that I'm going to be spot on as far as, um, as, as, far as the uh, uh, centering is concerned. And I could do another dial in if I need to, but I'm pretty sure that we're going to be spot on. Um, so... The, and the system I'm going to use is I'm going to turn it uh, one, one at a time and then I'm going to index in, index this fellow in and it'll pull, when I index it, it'll pull it into place and it'll be locked up and uh, then I'll be able to do the next gash. Release that off and of course I'll lock this up as well. Uh, release that off and move it on to the next index point. So that's the way I'm going to go about it. Um, ask me why I haven't nodded the head to be able to use the cutter directly on uh, on the quill. And the reason is that when you nod the head at 45 degrees like I have here, in order to be able to get to the center line, the, the um, table is going to have to be right out. And, and there's a lot of weight in this table and I really prefer to have it over the ram rather than have it away and even then when you look at that angle uh, you'd have to bring the table right up and that angle 
to to match to match that thing it would be too hard so I've gone with this setup um, it's not as robust as another but it's enough to be able to do the job I want to do because this is not hard it's strong but it's not hard um, now the other thing we've done uh, well, so when I've, I've used these bolts and, and this is probably a time now for me to talk about the, the bolts we've got the normal um, tie down bolts uh, that um, everybody has the kits with a different with a, with a different length bolts um, and studs that we use and um, what uh, what I also use is a lot of a lot of bolts now with the bolts I had them in a box and I was always trying to figure out which ones I needed, what lengths and so on. And uh, so I come up with an idea that the easiest way for me to, is to have them in the cupboard, is to have them colour coded. So what I've done is I've painted the different lengths of the bolts, uh, the heads, I've painted them a different colour. So there's white and red and blue and yellow and black. So if I find one and it's the right length, I just go there and grab another yellow one, another brown one if I need it. And so, so it's very, very easy. Saves me a lot of time uh, jetting around in a box and looking for the right bolt that I want. So uh, that's just a little tip um, that uh, can be uh, can be handy. Um, so yeah, we've I've had a lot of um, feedback on the. Uh, I haven't been near the computer in the last five or six hours, but had a lot of feedback about this ring gear. Now, this ring gear, as I've said, uh, it's one piece. And behind the gear at the back here, that all the holes are right around there. So this does not lend itself to cut it off and put another gear on there. That, did, that wasn't going to work. Uh, so all those comments in regard to that, in this case, it won't work. The other thing is, the other thought I had was where those five damaged teeth were, was to make a segment and then mill out that segment and uh, fit, fit a, a new segment with teeth on it. I put that idea aside as well. There's not enough dollars in this job anyway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to repair those teeth, uh, and machine this first to, uh, down to that depth. Then, then I'll repair those teeth with the involute cutter. I'll trim them into place and then I'll set up as I have here now and I will then gash the, uh, the starter angles for the, all the teeth. So there you have it. So that's uh, part four and um, keep posted because there's more to come.